Hello. I uh, just wanted to finish up the last bit of rules and action plans that we had done for our uh, podcast in the group. So I uh, couldn't just leave it hanging. So I wanted to break through the rest of these and I'll actually put them in the uh, link down below. So that way you can actually see them as well. And, and I've been attempting some of them so far, but we'll continue on from here. Uh, I'm going to go back on rule eight since I haven't finished that before I got interrupted. So uh, these are, as I said, action plans regarding to each rule in Jordan Peterson's book. So rule eight, um, rule eight itself is tell the truth or at least don't lie. So uh, one action plan for, for that is to practice saying smaller controversial statements that you believe with the caveat that you yourself may be mistaken and are willing to hear an opposing argument that deals with your insights. So you have to find people or at, at least practice in whatever manner to say the things that you believe to be true with the understanding that you yourself may be fallible and, and you're, you're willing to be um, fixed, or, or your opinions are willing to be changed insofar as you're, hopefully, the people that you're speaking to, their opinions are willing to be changed as well. There's a, this a great um, online essay that I was recently going back through again uh, by Paul Graham called What You Can't Say, and it, it really goes into the benefits of having a uh, a dialogue, or yeah, both a dialogue of the things that you're still thinking through that you don't necessarily, that you can't necessarily say because they're controversial. Um, so if, in order to have a productive conversation, I, I think you have to first agree upon having some sort of shared value that you both have. That way you can always go back to Okay, how close, how much is what we're saying, how much is that going to be uh, helping this core value that we both hold? So, um, if truth is your core value, then you can prove how, however much what your opinion is based off of how true it is. Or if your core value is well-being, or, or if you're like arguing with, uh, say your spouse, your core value may be the family household, and you can disagree on uh, particular things, but you have to look at how much they, your opinions or your disagreements, how much they relate back to that core value and how, whether they strengthen it or weaken it. Um, and and uh, compare strongest arguments against each other. Repeat the other person. Oh, repeat what the other person says uh, in order to stay in tune. So the, it, Peterson goes directly into this in, uh, I believe, this chapter, Rule 8, of repeating back what the opposing person is, is saying in a way that you understand and hopefully they agree with your understanding. That way you can then continue on from there. And in certain cases also steel manning their argument of making it maybe adding to it in a way that makes it so that it's a better uh, argument, which, which of course is hard. Uh, but as long as you both can agree on what the other person's point is, then you can move on from there and then you can combat that now that you both know its strengths and its flaws. Um, hold on. Okay. Um, okay, uh, be, prior to doing this, uh, here's, a, I guess, this is all, like, advice that is just ideas, basically, on how to actually put the rules into action, however we can. Uh, so, please, share, share down below any other ideas on how these can work, or whether or not they do work, and I'll be as well attempting these in so far as I can uh, because I don't know, there's a lot so I'll have to keep on testing them out 
Uh, consider, okay, so prior to, say, any argument that you may have with someone or an, an expected argument, consider someone that you disagree with. What is something that you'd like to say to them? So maybe there's some unspoken thing that you need to get off your chest because it's by keeping it hidden that's kind of actively killing you, um, or at least it's weakening you. Uh, and again, Paul Graham, that essay, uh, look it up, I'll share it in the link below as well, so you can read that, it's a good read. Um, imagine, okay, so imagine you actually being able to say the, the thing that you are holding deep inside you, that you want to get understood by the other person that you've been, like, holding out on. Um, so, still in the... Uh, Imagine then what you think their response would be. And then imagine, say, the worst for response that they could have. And then from there, mm -hmm. imagine how you could react to that. And, and kind of continue on. And, and then that that's going back to the articulate your problems um, advice, which, which, as I said, I think is a, a pretty good co condensation of his entire book, if, if I, I would be so bold to do something like that. But by having the, the unknown, the fear of the unknown that you have, say, of discussing these controversial topics with somebody that you know, by imagining all the things that are going to occur as a consequence to you stating this, hidden thing within you, then you can expect the worst and respond appropriately if it does come to be. And then maybe that puts you at a bit of an advantage against your uh, opponent, not really opponent because you're both supposed to have this shared uh, value, but at least something to help you out. Um, Oh, yeah. Uh, and if you are in a position where you don't have the courage or, or freedom to speak to the people that you know of these hidden things, or, or if you, all the people in your close circle all agree exactly with you, and, but you still have, like, certain opinions that you need to test out, uh, I'd recommend... Yeah, online somehow. I mean, that's basically what we use uh, the Jordan Peterson group during Saturdays is to think out loud so that we can, I don't know, usually articulate our thoughts for the later podcasts that we do, but also just start think of it loud or think out loud the different points brought up by Peterson in his lectures and his books or book. Um, Rule nine, assume that the person you are listening to might know something that you don't. So this fits nicely into rule, or the at least the advice from rule, rule eight, uh, or action plans for, for rule eight. Uh, but also, so seek out people that disagree with you and learn from them, if only to strengthen your own side by understanding theirs. So it's something that I, I want to look further into of harboring discussions between people that um, I have, I don't know, di differences of opinion through philosophy and just different understandings of, of what morality is, uh, and, and I, I want to talk to them, but not in a, a, in a debate format, because that seems to put both sides on the defensive and not willing to accept anything from the other side. So, uh, I, I believe that a good understanding prior to any of these conversations that I may have in the future or anybody else that t tests this out is to come in with the agreement that both of you are there to hear the best arguments from the opposing side not to refute those arguments, but to try to understand it, just as in uh, Carl Rogers' advice within Peterson's book about 
fully understanding the opposite per uh, the other person so that you can move on from there so in debates that doesn't seem to happen because people they'll listen to as much of an argument before they can come up with a response to that so even to the point where they're not listening to the whole thing they're only maybe listening to the first half and then they have something that can refute that so they don't have to listen to the rest of it whereas it may be that if you listen to the rest of it you'll get something out of it and maybe your refu refutation doesn't even apply perhaps but um it, it's a good thing when doing these types of arguments to come in with humility so that the other person doesn't see you as this person that's coming from a place of power that is where you're the the brilliant uh, articulator and the other person is an idiot. That's not going to be useful at all. So you have to come in with a sense of humility and say, and you don't have to. This is all advice. So, And it's advice to be tested out that may or may fail. To come in with humility so that in case you are wrong, you have a out, essentially, to 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 fall back on, like saying that you are usually wrong, or, or you're wrong in many instances, and you may be wrong in this instance, but so you're willing to find out whether you are or not. And then that at least gives them the observation that you are not coming in a, in a place of, a, of attack, but in a place of attempting to understand the opposing side. And maybe that will, that gratitude that you're showing will sh spread, on to, spread out towards them as well so that they will show you that same gratitude. And you have to give them that same out, essentially, so that you can't say, like, you're either an idiot or you're you you've just been misled or because people don't want to be have only two options of being wrong and an idiot or like that's their only option against your argument so uh, do not lock your opponent into having to be either wrong or to ignore you. So yeah, there, there's their two options. They, they can either be wrong or they can just ignore whatever it is you're saying. So neither of those are, I mean, I guess you would prefer that they'd be wrong, but they don't prefer that. So they're going to choose to ignore you. So yeah, it's, it, it, it's better to give them an out so that they don't have to ignore you and, and they don't have to be shamed against being wrong. I mean, being wrong isn't that bad. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very useful in fact. Um, petty things do not need to be argued over. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're arguing just for the sake of arguing, then unless both of you enjoy that, so perhaps. But generally, arguments don't need to be had. It's only on things that matter. That 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 way, the argument actually is worthwhile. Uh, on things that should be argued over and discussed readily and, and better understood from both sides. Um, yes, work off, of the, work off of the same base level needs as your opponent. So yeah, this goes back into uh, the Michael Rosenberg uh, training course that I listened to. It, it talks about how every person is doing things based off of some sort of need that they have. And so if you can't understand why somebody is doing something or why they have a certain belief that they have, then the reasoning is that belief or that action is fulfilling some sort of need that they have. And this is useful for, for your own self. If you're doing something that doesn't make sense to you, you're filling out some sort of need that you have. And so it's good to recognize the needs that other people have. That way you can better understand the other person and work off of that to come up with a good solution that works best for both of you. So that's the action plans for rule nine. 
Uh, rule 10, be precise in your speech. Um, yeah, I mean, it <laughs> goes back to leave nothing vague. Oh, this is actually a quote. Uh, leave nothing vague. Organize a list of problems you have around you. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Part of that is a quote from that actual chapter of leave nothing vague, and then it goes on from there. Um, but so this is the advice. Uh, or organize a list of problems you have around you. No necessary intention to fixing them, just so that you know that they're there. So this is actually something I've been doing for the last three or four weeks, maybe, of just kind of keeping a small notebook uh, with me and anytime I see some sort of problem, be it in the, my physical environment around me, say like there's a, something broken over here, uh, I'll keep track of it. And, and it's not like everything. It could, it, it's mostly so that I can keep that frame of mind and, and of perspective while I'm beha while I'm out there uh, existing in the world is so that I can recognize problems around me and write them down so that they're basically like percolating in the back of my head so that over time I'll, I'll come up with solutions to those problems or, or I, I think I brought this up in the actual uh, discussion this probably isn't the best uh, or it's not the yeah it's not the best advice because from there there's a another I would say a better uh, way of dealing with those problems is to break them down into the needs that those problems have. So if there's, say, just writing down a problem doesn't tell you anything about how to solve it. So you need to break down the problem into its core components so that you know which part of the core component is faulty, and then you can fix that core part of the component and I would give some okay uh, I guess one small thing just so that it's easily understood um, in the bathroom there was a shower curtain rod and it's it was just kind of like setting resting uh, on the actual like shower um, part of the shower it, it, it wasn't like held in place at all I guess it it I don't know, it, it wasn't connected to the wall or anything like that. And so I wrote down the problem and, and then I, because I knew the problem and that, that happened to be a very simple one, uh, just going about screwing that into place. And then later on, uh, <laughs> it, it's funny, I, I slipped in the shower and I would have fallen back and hit my, uh, hurt myself had I not, it, but my arm like caught the shower rod now fixed into place so that I, I didn't end up hurting myself, which is excellent. Uh, so it, it, it's a quick little story about how just the recognition of problems and, and attempting to fix them uh, can work out better, best in the long run. Um, yeah, so leave nothing vague. Even you, That's the thing, just by writing down that you have problems, that Oh, gets rid of a small bit of anxiety within you, I think. Perhaps. And, and then by going even further and breaking them down into actual action steps that you can attempt to fix this problem, I would say that empowers you or, or it encourages you, perhaps. List your problems with your habits. Discover the root to these. Avoid the roots or treat them. Oh, okay, yes. So you can... It, it, in my example, that was a actual problem with my surroundings, but there's also problems within your habits. Uh, say you have a particular habit that you don't want to continue, say smoking or something like that. Um, if you break down... So you can list out the problem, and then you can break down what leads to that problem manifesting itself. So what leads to me, myself smoking a cigarette? And there's a whole set of micro-routines prior to that that 
you can articulate and from there understand how to keep those micro routines from occurring. Say any time, maybe the reason you uh, smoke a cigarette is just because you need uh, something to de-stress yourself from whatever it is that you're working on. So your your automatic micro routine is to leave whatever you're working on, walk outside, pull out a cigarette. So if you can adapt that micro routine to de do something else that's de-stressful or, or that is a different habit that you can build off of. Like the reason we do things is mostly out of habit where we're like unconsciously acting out uh, whatever need that we have or whatever prior thing that we've done before led to a successful uh, need being fulfilled, such as not, not being stressed. But there's other habits that we can build up and practice that will fulfill those needs without um, the negative habit we have associated or that we already have associated with those routines and the, those habits or those unconscious uh, yeah, habits that we have. All right. Um, avoid the roots or treat them. Yeah. Okay. And rule 11, do not bother children when they are skateboarding. Um, <laughs> it's pretty much a, a, a chapter on the, the, the amazing spirit that humans have of being able to, that, that they will willingly go against things that are dangerous and overcome them, or they'll be like injured by them. And then from that they'll learn. So it's, it's very much teaching the virtues of w willing to be harmed in, in the course of facing something that you seek that you see as admirable. So in the cases of children, they're skateboarding because they think it's cool. They want to be cool, and so they're they'll put in the effort and the practice and they'll get hurt from it. And over time it, it they're further expanding their competency so that they can do things that are dangerous that would normally hurt them, but now it's not hurting them because they've practiced so much and, and they've overcome their fears and, and their the pain from it that they've been able to conquer this admiral task of, say, doing some sort of trick on a skateboard. So um, the, the action plan that, that I have for that is to set out to fail at something that you admire. Spend the time to fail properly and then reward your attempts no matter the outcome. So... It's really a different perspective for attempting things. Instead of being disappointed when you attempt something and then you fail at it, if you're expecting to fa fail at it because you have the understanding that you're a beginner at this and you're going to have to fail at this, uh, every beginner fails at what they're attempting to do, then... Perhaps it, it can change your perspective so that you're not disappointed, you're encouraged through your failures because they give you the reminder that wh where you are now is not where you're going to be in, in the future. If you continue failing, then in the future, you won't fail in this manner. You're going to fail in different manners, something because you failed so much at this specific task, you're in into the future. You're going to fail at something that's even greater that the person you are now can even comprehend. So I, I myself, I, I'm attempting to learn piano, and I, I, I'm not good since I've just started. But I, I've I've still been continuing on at it because I actually set out to learn a specific song that I really like. And so because I have this song that I really like, and when I play it, I kind of get that 
bit of excitement and joy from hearing that song. Even when I'm failing at it, I, I'm, I still get the, that encouragement because I know that I'm going to be able to play the song that I really quite enjoy. So, um, yeah, and reward your attempts no matter the outcome. This is probably not exact, uh, just based off of, uh, as I was saying uh, before, Karen Pryor's book, of Don't Shoot the Dog. But because you, she goes in uh, on about how you're supposed to re reinforce positive behavior. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're not always going to get that positive behavior. But she actually talks about how you're supposed to reward behavior that's proximal to positive. So even if you fail, or, or it, if you're making the attempt and you're getting further than you were before, then you need to reward that behavior, even if it's not the the ideal. Um, just the the mere fact that you've progressed is something that you need to uh, reinforce with something that, like, I don't know, something that you already enjoy and something that you can do quickly, uh, or just some sort of encouragement or other person. You can figure out what it is that you would be most rewarded by. So maybe, like, a, a sweet candy or something like that. Or, or if you want it to be more, it could be money. You could set it up so that somebody pays you every time that you accomplish uh, something close, proximal in your progression towards your goals. So, yeah. So, uh, just, uh, it's an outlook of attempting and failing and then Understanding that and, and understanding that failure is necessary. Rule 12. Pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. This is, again, one, one of those rules that is quite uh, exact. It, it, it's, it's already an action plan within itself, at least in one manner. So a, as you read the chapter, you kind of have to abstract out what the the rule itself is attempting to uh, tell you, along with the chapter itself. So, I think in, in the case of cats, uh, just because cats are quite different from dogs, because dogs, they'll, they're actively seeking to be uh, socialized with. Cats are uh, a different creature in themselves, that they're only going to uh, be willing to be pet insofar as they get something out of it and they feel safe. So you you definitely have to coax a, a, an actual cat. Uh, well, it depends on the cat. Some are quite uh, quite socialized and domesticated so that they're going to come exactly when you call. But cats are not, not like dogs. You have to, if, if you're a stranger to the cat, you have to come at it and offer your kind of your own hand to them so that and they'll sniff it and then once they deem that you've you're safe enough for them they'll allow you to pet them so i think that's the, that's the point is to keep an eye out for any opportunities around you that you can coax into something that can flourish and then it's not necessarily even something that will positively benefit you, but see, keep an eye out for cats in the wild uh, of something that you could benefit in, in a certain way and that, and try to understand how it is that you could cause that, that cat to flourish. So it, I'm going to uh, um, advise, not advise, I, I, I'm going to definitely uh, recommend um, Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, because that, it, that's really a, a great way to communicate with people and to interact with them, just by taking the advice from that book and 
implementing it into your life as well. Uh, and, and I think that it, it, it's very good, especially in regards to this role, I think, because every person that you interact with is essentially a cat. They're not going to want to interact with you unless you can give them something in return or, or, and when you know what it is that you can do that can like in the case of a cat offering something or, or offering your hand so that they're remaining cautious w with a cat specifically, but with people, there's other things that we can do. So, uh, in one of the Q and A's, Peterson talks about how, uh, if, if you're somebody that hates small talk, then <laughs> it, it, if you hate small talk, then uh, people, and you don't interact with people, small talk is essentially that, that, that minuscule communication between two people so that later more important discussions can be had. Keep track of opportunities that have been presented to you. So in this metaphor, it's a cat. But there's many other times that you there are cats or opportunities that are within your observation if you keep your eyes open to them. These opportunities calling out to you, meowing in, in the case of cat. So... Analyze these opportunities. Nurture them. I, I think that's the metaphor that he's going with. And, and it, it's very similar to the stop and smell the roses, but I think it, it's it's much more interesting it, by using a, a cat. Because, because a rose by itself is something that's passive, that you can stop, smell the roses, or you can stop and stomp on the roses. You can ignore the roses. You, the, the roses will are stuck uh, within one place. A, a cat is something that you have to coax in order to pet. You have to put effort into actually getting something in return. So, yeah, I, I think opportunities is a very good way of thinking about cats. Or not specifically cats, but in this metaphor, imagine opportunities as something that you have to respect and encourage. And then maybe by doing that, you'll be able to get something in return. But maybe not. Sometimes opportunities aren't necessarily for you yourself. Maybe they're just something that somebody has a somebody else has a problem, or somebody else could be flourishing more than they are currently, and there's something that you can do to help them. And as in the case of how to win friends and influence people, that mindset over time is is not necessarily like self interested. It it's it, it it speaks to your soul by being able to benefit others, even in a way that's unknown to them. It, because you're the one that knows it, you can take that bit of good deed or, or that bit of increment uh, increase of well-being in the world uh that you can you can take that with you and, and be strengthened by it so another i guess um interpretation i guess of that rule as well as kind of an action plan work towards helping all creatures reach their best outcomes only they know that the, only they know their needs you may be able to facilitate them. That, that's the thing. It's, it's best to come at these opportunities or these people or these cats not by assuming what it is that they need and then pushing that onto them. Say it's somebody that is destitute 
and there, there's some sort of deeper need uh, to all of these things that may not even be the thing that is being declared to you it, it takes deep observation in order to recognize a need that somebody has or something has and helping that thing or that person reach that need that they have on their own. I think that, that I think that's more honorable than if you were to just give that person uh, something out of your own self instead of allowing them to be strong enough to get something on their own through your maybe you're helping them but if you give something to somebody they'll they'll become reliant on you and they may even become resentful because you're a constant reminder of what they are a failure at and what they're unable to achieve on their own. So if you, you can help somebody to flourish in, in their capacity by giving them the opportunities to do something on their own. Yeah. Yeah, to, to, to look at people and not see who they are in their current self, but who they could be with some help or, or with some, whatever it is that they're, that's in their way. You can help them know how to conquer that and, and to flourish. So yeah, that, that's my list of action plans based off of Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. Um, hopefully, you, they'll be useful to you. They're hopefully going to be useful to me. I'll be testing them out. Um, there'll be a link to below that you can see all of them. And you can share like if they've been useful or not. Uh, I'll be doing the same. So 